Hi, I am Brian from the DES Learning Network. You know, many teachers, instructors, or trainers have found creative ways to utilize photos as a collaborative instructional tool. Now we've discovered a simple, easy to use application that works really well for these on the go sort of learning experiences. Photo Editor by Aviary, which is now part of the Adobe family, is a mobile application that works the same in either an iOS or Android environment and it adds functionality well beyond standard photo editing tools that come with your phone. The application does not require a specific login or registration and images created can be shared using any of the popular social media platforms. This provides you as an instructor needed flexibility as you can quickly create, edit and share images on the fly with an easy yet robust photo editing tool right from within your phone or other camera equipped mobile device. Well today we are really excited to introduce you to this tool and show you how it works and what you can do with it. Our goal is to show you and let you experience some of the main features that are part of the Aviary Photo Editor. More specifically, within minutes we'll show you how you can use some of the more advanced editing functions that are part of Aviary and that can turn any ordinary picture into a great looking photograph. We will show you how you can create a meme from any picture you take with your phone and then we will show you how you can share your images with others using your preferred social media platform. Not only will we show you these features, but we will give you some time to dig in yourself and interact with the features of the Aviary Photo Editor. Now, whether you use Aviary for instructional purposes or just to have fun with it, the Photo Editor is a very practical tool to have at your fingertips. So let's not waste any time and get started. Okay. The first thing we want to do is show you how to install the Aviary Photo Editor on your phone. Now we strongly recommend that you download the app so that you can right away apply what you're going to learn in this module. The good news is that there's no charge to download Aviary. And downloading is also very simple. To start, please choose your platform, either iOS or Android devices, by clicking on the image of the appropriate phone. On your iPhone, open up the App Store and search for Aviary. You will see several search results. Select Aviary Photo Editor and click on it. Next, in the Photo Editor by Aviary app description, click on Get. This will install the app on your device. OK. Now that you've installed Aviary on your phone, we want to make sure that you are familiar with the app's interface, its layout, and functionality. As a note, we will not provide you with an in-depth look at the tool. We feel that this is something that you can explore on your own. However, we want to show you a few common features that we think you will enjoy using and that might be useful to you. Now, aside from a brief overview of those features, we want to focus on three specific functions to help you understand what this tool can do. We will take a closer look at and show you how you can specifically use the enhanced feature to edit the look of an image, also how you can change the focus of an image, and then how to apply a vignette. Then we will take this a step further and show you how to create a meme by adding text on the image. And finally, we show you how to share your image using the share function. After we show you how to do it, we will then provide you the opportunity to try out the function here on the screen in a simulation activity. Before we end this module, we will have you do what we showed you on your actual phone. At the end, we will give you an opportunity to share with us how you did. This here is an image of the Aviary Photo Editor tool open on an iPhone. Now when you first open the tool, images that are on your phone will be shown. Now let me briefly explain the things that we see here.
Welcome back. Now I hope that you were able to explore some of the features of the photo editor and that you took the opportunity to not only see what this tool can do in terms of functionality, but also that you may have gotten an idea or two about how Aviary could specifically benefit you and your work, or even personally. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, we want to now turn our attention to specifically learning how to edit an image by applying a few of the basic functions, such as using the enhanced feature, changing the focus of the image, and adding a vignette. In other words, we'll show you how you can take this image here and turn it into something like this. Now we will first demonstrate to you how it's done and then, as I mentioned earlier, we will let you try it. So let's get started.
Welcome to the Wage and Hour Compliance Responsibilities Training for Managers. My name is Mario and I will be your guide as you complete this training module. You know, as a company, Acme Widgets has an obligation to meet all federal and state labor regulations and laws. The purpose of this training course is to go over those laws and regulations that apply to the definition and payment of overtime, as directed by the Federal Overtime Law, which is also known as the Fair Labor Standards Act, or FLSA. This is required compliance training for all ACME managers and supervisors. As someone with managerial or supervisory responsibilities, your job will most likely include approving time cards or authorizing overtime. It is therefore important to know how the laws apply to your organization or department here at ACME. After completing this course, you will be able to list the requirements of the Fair Labor Standards Act as they pertain to defining and paying overtime. You'll also be able to explain the difference between non-exempt and exempt status and eligibility under FLSA requirements. Furthermore, you'll be able to define the rules of the 40-hour work week and overtime under the FLSA requirements, and you will be able to explain the manager's role in exercising those FLSA requirements. And finally, you'll be able to also clarify consequences of non-compliance and know how to avoid them. So let's get started. There are two sections in this course. The first section is about the law as it pertains to wage hours and overtime. After all, it is important to understand the law. First, we will talk about what FLSA is. Then, we will build upon that and talk about why it is important to ACME. Next, we will discuss the law as it pertains to overtime. And finally, we will go over your responsibilities as someone that approves time for company employees. What is the FLSA? The Fair Labor Standards Act is the federal law that addresses minimum wage, work hours, overtime, and child labor. It also addresses the employer's obligation to keep detailed records. It is important to understand FLSA regulations. Non-compliance with the law can result in penalties, loss of federal contractor status, and or legal costs. If an audit determines that an FLSA violation has occurred, the company is liable and subject to fines or penalties. This is true even if an employee behaved with the very best of intentions and did not realize that the law had been violated. Many states also have wage and hour laws that often differ from federal law. Employers are required to comply with the law or contract provision most beneficial to the employee, so state laws and labor contracts can supersede the FLSA. The federal government has a website dedicated to the Fair Labor Standards Act. You can access the site by going to www.dol.gov forward slash WHD forward slash FLSA. Now, why don't you go ahead and click on the link above the image on the right to access the site, so that you can familiarize yourself with it. So what is your role of responsibility? As a manager or supervisor here at ACME Widgets, you have certain responsibilities to not only understand ACME's policies, but also to adhere to the law and associated regulations. Let's meet George. George is a manager in his company's payroll division. He has currently 12 employees that he is responsible for. As a manager, 
George has the responsibility to ensure that all overtime pay policies are known and reinforced in his organization. There is a lot that he is responsible for. Just like you, George needs to first understand the policies. While this is a good start, it is simply not enough. As a manager, he is also accountable for complying with the law and keeping accurate descriptions of all exempt and non-exempt positions, especially as job descriptions change. These descriptions help determine if an employee is exempt or non-exempt and therefore eligible for overtime. Well, that seems like a lot of balls to juggle. Now let's take a look at what compliance with overtime means. For this, let's access the Department of Labor's website. To do so, simply click on the image right here on the page. Now take a moment and read the information presented on the site, specifically as it deals with overtime pay. And by the way, if you have any questions about this topic, this site is always a great place to get the answers. As a manager, you are responsible for ensuring that all hours worked are recorded accurately, including time spent on travel, time spent being on call, and time where an employee works during lunch. Now meal breaks usually mean that no work is being done, but as a time approver you cannot assume that this is always true. Supervisors may be tempted to code an automatic pay deduction for meal breaks. The employee may decide to use the time to catch up on work or complete a task while eating at their desk or station. If an employee does work during meal times, they must be paid for the time under the law. It is your responsibility as a manager or supervisor to make sure that any work during meal break is recorded and paid per the FLSA law. As a manager or supervisor, you are accountable for accurate timesheets and payroll records. Failure to keep accurate records can cause problems in the event of a Department of Labor audit. It is not legal to allow an employee to work off the clock or omit overtime records, even if the overtime is not authorized. This can have serious consequences. Simply stated, all work must be recorded and all overtime work must be paid. As a manager or supervisor, you are responsible for maintaining accurate job descriptions. Let's take a look at this case study. Susan supervised two accounting clerks who were eligible for overtime. Because Susan supervised two full-time employees, her position was considered exempt and not eligible for overtime. Due to a reorganization, the accounting clerks were reassigned to other departments. Susan remained in her current job. She was assigned some of the accounting duties performed by the previous clerks. Now Susan doesn't have an accounting degree and one is not necessary to complete her job responsibilities. But because Susan's job no longer includes supervisory responsibilities, she became eligible for overtime. But her job title was never changed. Susan's record indicated she was not eligible for overtime, but in her new job, she is eligible. If Susan worked any overtime in her new role, she would not receive overtime pay because her job classification was based on her previous role. As a manager or supervisor, you are responsible to manage your employees' schedules. You are also responsible to control overtime costs. It is important that managers and supervisors communicate clearly that all overtime must be pre-approved. But under FLSA law, if an employee has worked overtime, ACME must pay for the hours worked, even if the time was not pre-approved. This is another reason why accurate records are so important. Employees who repeatedly work overtime without approval are subject to disciplinary action. As a manager or a supervisor, you are responsible for knowing and reinforcing the company policies and the policies of your department. It is a good idea to review ACME's overtime policy on a regular basis. You will find it on the Human Resources page on the employee portal. Let's discuss some of the potential consequences of not complying with the law. As we discussed earlier, accurate timesheets is an important responsibility. 
Poor time recording practices may lead to significant legal costs, as is the payment of liquidated damages. Liquidated damages may be calculated as a multiple of wages owed. For example, if a court finds an employee earned but was not paid for $5,000 in overtime, the employer may be required to pay the employee the $5,000 plus an additional $5,000 in liquidated damages. Employers automatically bear the burden of proving any exemption under FLSA. This can result in significant lawyer's fees. If any audit turns up irregularities, civil and criminal penalties may include fines and or imprisonment. Here's a simple tip for you. Never instruct a non-exempt employee to leave worked hours off their time card. Now that you know what your responsibilities are under the law, we turn our attention to how the law impacts overtime. Before we can begin, let us first define who is eligible for overtime and who is not. Well, jobs are classified as either exempt or non-exempt. In jobs considered non-exempt, overtime must be paid. If a job is not eligible for overtime, it is considered exempt and the overtime laws do not apply. Corporate compensation determines if a position is exempt or non-exempt based on a job description submitted by the manager. The job description is reviewed according to a set of standards under FLSA and categorized as either exempt or non-exempt. Now here at ACME, hourly production employees and employees in levels 1 through 4 are considered non-exempt and are therefore eligible for overtime payment. Note that there may be some employees in certain management development programs that are also non-exempt. If you have any further questions, contact the ACME Human Resources or the Corporate Compensation Department regarding any exempt or non-exempt statuses for job descriptions in your department. Who specifically is eligible for and qualifies for overtime? In most cases, a non-exempt employee is eligible for overtime if they work in excess of 40 hours in one work week, which, by the way, is not the same as a pay period. At ACME, a typical work week is Monday through Sunday. In some states, or in some plans where non-exempt employees are covered by a union contract, employees may be eligible for overtime pay after 8, 10, or 12 hours work in a day. Now contact your local HR representative for specific state or location information. There are certain actions that are considered illegal when determining what makes up a 40-hour work week. For example, averaging hours over several weeks to come up with a 40-hour work week is not allowed. If an employee works 44 hours one week and 36 hours the next, that does not constitute an average of a 40-hour work week. Another inappropriate action is allowing off-the-clock work. A supervisor or manager may suggest to leave work time off the record to make a budget or show less expenses. The employees then offered comp time to make up for it. This is illegal, as it is a violation of the FLSA. Some managers or supervisors may not log overtime as a way of disciplining an employee who has not received approval to work overtime. This is a very serious violation of the FLSA. Probably the most important guideline to remember as a time approver is that if the time is worked, even if not approved, it must be paid. There are more appropriate ways to handle unauthorized overtime. On-call time is considered eligible for overtime if the following criteria are met. The 
On call, time is considered eligible for overtime if the following criteria are met. The employee is waiting at work for a specific task to start, examples, setting up for an assembly or cleaning up after shift, or the employees are required to remain a certain distance from the workplace, respond within a certain time frame, or observe certain restrictions while on call, or the employee does not use that on-call time for personal reasons. Well, let's say an employee carries the company's cell phone, but is generally free to do whatever they want while on call. At that point, the employee is only paid if they are called to work. But if the employees are required to remain within a certain distance off the workplace, respond within a certain time frame, or observe certain restrictions in their behavior while they are on call, then time will be paid. Training time is considered eligible for overtime if a non-exempt employee is required to attend a lecture, meeting, or training session, or the training event is conducted off-site and requires travel. We will discuss travel in a moment. ACME is not required to pay for training time if the training is voluntary, or no work is performed, or if the training is not required for job proficiency.